what is going on folks it is k spade the prospect i am back today i got something special for you guys today man this is one of the my most favorite series on my channel welcome to sin city my unlv running rebels football series in ncaa i guess you could say ncaa 19 it really is 14 but we got new rosters that's neither here nor there folks i've been going for a while with this series and you probably don't even have your memories refreshed on what's going on so i'm gonna bring you guys today's video Unlike any other Welcome to Sin City video you've ever seen, I'm going to basically give you the highlights to finish up the season. The game you're watching right here, the last regular season game of the year, you got the winless San Jose State team in here trying to play the role of spoiler. And I'm going to tell you, man, it ain't nothing like a team with no wins. They just be angry. They really look forward to trying to play spoiler. And even though this team has no wins whatsoever. Oh, down goes Nick Saban. Down goes Nick Saban. Definitely throwing that in there. Even though they got no wins, you can't look past these teams. I don't know what it is, but these are the games that you got to really be careful or you'll get caught slipping. You can already see right here, 7-7 game. Now, we jump ahead in the game right before the half. Game still tied up at 7 apiece. Lexington Time is doing what we saw him do all season long. Take a little bit of a crack in the offensive line. Make yourself skinny. Get through there and get in the end zone. Now, we jump ahead. It's a 14-14 game. As you can see how physical the game has been in the game track. Big Tyrone Kelly in the defensive front four for the Rebels. Caused a lot of problems for San Jose State, but they still was able to put up 21 points. At one point right here, they were leading 21-14 before Darren Woods Jr. takes a hitch route, turns around, cut on the doggone afterburners, and took it to the house to tie the game up at 21 apiece. And later in the game, the Rebels would take care of business. They're going to get the dub. Player of the game goes to LT, Young Lexo. Under 20 carries, over 150 yards rushing, and the next game I'm going to bring you guys is the Mountain West Conference Championship. Now, young coach K. Spade, three years in the biz right now. The first year got to this game, took a loss. The second year won it, and you know he want to come back and solidify his greatness with this win. The Rebels took care of business so far this season, man. 11-1, undefeated in the conference. And to my surprise, if you look over on the mountainside, Air Force has been looking pretty good too. 9-3 overall, 6-2 in the conference. Won the tiebreaker against Utah State. And we're going to come into this game expecting to see two teams really good at running the football. Air Force came out and wanted to do something a little bit different. Wanted to pass, but the pass rush is crazy. Now, it was a bit of a scare for the Rebels right here. Armani Rogers standing tall in the pocket, delivers a beautiful pass to Brandon Presley. 13-yard pickup, but it was a hit as soon as he released that pass. Amani Rogers goes down awkwardly. The training staff has to come out. Check this out for some odd reason. The Air Force trainers come out to check on Armani Rogers. I don't know how I feel about that. But Rogers would get back on the field. And later in that same drive, they would get into the end zone thanks to the receiving and speed of young Lexo, who gets in the end zone. But guess what? Adversity would still be knocking on the door. A broken toe would take Lexington Thomas out of the game, of course. You know, it's a lot of other good running backs on this team ready to put in work. And also, the speedy receiver, Makai Stevenson, back on the field. You know how they value his speed. And right here, him and Rogers hooks up. Later in that game, man, 24-7, you could definitely see the Rebels was taking care of business. Later in the game, Air Force had one last heave-ho. David Cormier gets in the end zone on a, I guess you could call it luck. They just threw the pass up. It probably should have been intercepted. But even though they tried to push back at the end of the game, it wasn't enough. They could not stop the Rebels. Play of the game again, Rogers standing tall. He's a big body. He can take the punishment from the defense, and he's not afraid to stand tall and deliver the pass, even when he knows he's about to get hit. Beautiful game. They get a chance to hoist the trophy. Mountain West Conference champs two years in a row. And folks, we talk so much about Rogers and Lexington Thomas and Makai Stevenson and Kendall Keys in the offense. This is something you don't see often. The player of the game, the MVP of this game goes to Tyrone Kelly. The defensive front has been creating havoc all season long, and this guy was nothing short of phenomenal. Six tackles for a loss, three sacks. That win right there would catapult the Rebels into the Rose Bowl against Notre Dame. This is a game that a lot of people chose Notre Dame. Now, being the underdog in a game is something that's not new to the Rebels. They're used to this feeling. I think at this point they kind of thrive off of it, but if you look at the season rankings, you got two teams that's good at two different things. 
Notre Dame ranked in the top 10 in the nation in passing touchdowns. The Rebels ranked number one in the nation in rushing touchdowns. And you gotta wonder how that's gonna favor. I'm sure Brian Kelly has been talking to his defensive unit about the rushing attack of the Rebels. I know they're going to be keyed in on it. Nobody really knew how this game would play out, so let's get down to the field. I'll show you guys exactly how it went. Early in the game, 0-0 game, Brandon Wimbush standing tall in the pocket forever. You cannot do that against these Rebels. You can't. And this is how they've been setting the tone all season. You make the opposing quarterbacks uncomfortable in the pocket, and then you can just get in their head. However, though, Notre Dame said, hold on, we ready too. They're bringing the pressure. If you look at this drive right here, it tells you so much about the Rebels, man. They're a versatile offense. They can run. The quarterback can run. He can throw. The receivers can catch. It's a tough-to-stop offense. Second and goal, Rodgers hooks up with his favorite target this year, Kendall Keys, to get in the end zone for the first score today for either team. And Kendall Keys was keyed up for, yeah, play on words right there. Kendall Keys was keyed up for a really big game so far today. So the Rebels come out and set the tone. They go up 7-0, and you already knew Notre Dame was not going to lay down. They were not going to go away. We jump ahead in the game, man, and you can see, threatening the score right outside the red zone. Notre Dame's drive. They come back, hook up with a receiver. This looks similar to the play that the Rebels scored on. This gets them down inside the 10-yard line. Second and goal. Wimbush drops back, decides he wants to run, slides down to avoid getting hit. I believe if he stays on his feet, he probably gets in the end zone. They like it so much, they're not going to call a play. They go no huddle, rush him back to the line of scrimmage. It's third and goal from about the one. I'm expecting run. You're expecting run. Shout out to K Spade Jr. back from a broken collarbone. Basically missed the entire season. This is his sophomore season. They was expecting really big things from this kid. Josh Adams does get in the end zone to tie this game up at seven apiece. Neither of these teams would go away. Later on in the second quarter, threatening the score again, Notre Dame across the middle to a wide receiver. Boykin is brought down just shy of the end zone. We've seen this guy do work. As you can see, man, he's such a big receiver, physical receiver. You can't jam him off the line. Like, you can come down and try to get a good jam on him. It just doesn't work. They've been trying to do that all year long. And the Rebels come back trying to attack and get in scoring range before the end of the half. Rodgers throws an interception. He has kind of had an issue with interceptions this season. Not too bad, but definitely an area he could improve upon. You put Notre Dame in a situation where they can go up two scores before the half, Wimbush turns on the burners, runs through a couple of defenders, gets in the end zone again. Notre Dame is up 21-7. The Rebels have played from behind before. This is not new territory to them, but late in the game, you can see they were still down. Junior delivers a big-time hit on Wimbush, who jumps up like it ain't nothing. They're threatening to the score late in the game and take it up two scores. Wimbush standing in the pocket, not liking what he's seeing, taking off, getting in the end zone. 28 points for Notre Dame. 14 points for the Rebels here in the fourth quarter. It's going to take a miracle, a miraculous comeback. And this is something that these kids, they built for it, man. They built for it. At least I think they are. Rodgers decides to keep it right here. 10 yards on the ground. We jump ahead in that play. Closing in on midfield, a play action pass. And this is something that a lot of people don't give Lexington Thomas all his credit for. He's a great running back. We already know that. But he is a receiving threat out of the backfield, and he doesn't have to get all the way down the field. You can throw it to him in the flats, and he's got the speed and the shiftiness to make those short dink passes, big-time pickups. Matter of fact, second and nine, they go to the screen. The blockers do an amazing job. Anybody could have scored on this play. Maybe even you. Yeah, you, the guy watching my video. You, you could have scored right here on that play with those blockers. 21 28, late in the game, you still need a play. You do not want Notre Dame to come out here and run that clock out, and it looks like they're trying to do it. 12 yards on the ground for Wimbush. First and 10. He's closing in on 60 yards rushing from the quarterback position. Already accounts for two touchdowns, but the pressure gets to him here. He throws the ill-advised pass. Free safety Evan Austry comes out of nowhere and makes an amazing interception. This is the turnover the Rebels needed. They've been doing it all season can they do it one last time for the seniors? 
you're looking around at Kendall Keys and Young Lexo. These guys, this is the last game they will ever wear this uniform. They don't want to go out on an L. I know they don't. Armani Rogers, all he needs is an opportunity. Gets back on the field, throws this same pass that he threw an interception on earlier. Darren Woods is there for the catch. 25 yards on the play. They are inside the five. Turn around and hand it to Young Lexo, who gets in the game. Ties this game up at 28 apiece, and folks, it's still two minutes on the clock. That's a lot of time. Wimbush come back, checks it down right there. He says, we can take a page from the Rebels. You guys check it down to your playmakers. We can do that too. CJ Sanders with his fourth reception of the game. Later in that drive, second down. They're picking on Darius Moulton. I don't know what's going on with Darius. Evan Austrian gets there and he can't make the tackle. Equanima St. Brown, 61 yards on the play. Wimbush, 22 of 29, closing in on 250 yards passing. Amazing game for Wimbush. That kid wants to win. It's only one problem. The Rebels ain't got no quit in them. 59 seconds on the clock. They are still moving the ball. They need to score, and they go to who? Kendall Keys. This guy has made play after play after play. They told this kid at the start of the year. They said, with Devontae Boyd gone, we need you to step up. We need you to do more, and he has answered the call. Huge catch to put him inside the five-yard line. 25 seconds on the clock. Why not turn around and hand it to Young Lexo? He's been getting it done all season as well. He gets in the end zone to tie this game up at 35 apiece. Man, Young Lexington Thomas has cemented his name into UNLV history. Like, he is in the record books now. All-time leading rusher, all-time leading uh, scorer from the running position. He's in there, man. So, look, the Rebels win the coin toss. They elect to go defense first. And all the pressure right here is on Notre Dame. Third and six. Let's see what they choose to do. They actually hand it off. They're not going to get the first. Only picked up a couple of yards. It's going to be fourth and a long four. And they elect to go for the field goal. 38-35. Rodgers drops back. Of course, he goes to Kendall Keys again. 17-yard reception. Kendall Keys makes a tough catch. Makes sure that he stays in bounds. You give the Rebels the football around the five-yard line with all the talent they got. It's going to be tough to keep these guys out the painted area. Let's see what they do. Turn around and hand it off. Xavier Campbell gets in the end zone. He gets the score. Rebels get the win. They come from behind in the Rose Bowl to upset the favorite Notre Dame fighting Irish. Get them out of here. Look at this team, man. Look at this team. This is crazy. And I'm going to tell you something. Notre Dame did an amazing job stopping the run. They made these running backs uncomfortable. They kept a spy in on Armani Rogers, and they still couldn't stop Young Lexo. What happens when you got a great running back like him? If he's not getting it going on the ground, a good offensive coordinator finds a way to get the ball to his playmakers. That's exactly what happened out here. So you can already see, man, the celebration has started on the field. These kids are happy. This is the perfect way to end this season. You got some seniors walking out of here, man. They probably got some heavy eyes. They gonna tell you it's pollen, but they got water running down their cheeks. That's a hell of a game. That's a hell of a season. Our play of the game goes to Lexington Thomas. Only 30 yards on the ground, but still uh, racked up 100 yards of total offense and just got in the end zone repeatedly. Running, receiving, you name it. So folks, the next video you guys will see from me in this series will be the offseason. And then I'm going to start back bringing you guys the video in traditional format, one game at a time. I'm about to ramp it back up. I'm still loving this game. Look, man, if you got an Xbox 360 or a PlayStation 3, I'm telling you, it's worth getting this game. The rosters are updated, and I'm having a ball with it. Anyway, folks, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, do me a favor, leave a like on the video. If you're new to my channel, hit subscribe. I'm out the next time, folks. Yep. Yeah.